I got through medical school when I was very, very young. You know, I've been treating Jim for 50 years, and I started practice when I think, what, five, six, seven years of age? Just what's this, uh, Dobie Gillis, uh, MD sort of thing? But in any case, I've known Jim for a long time. When, you know, all you guys, all you entrepreneurs, when the rest of us see a need, you see the opportunity. And Jim certainly saw the need and was there with, an, with the opportunity. In 1964, LBJ came to Martin County and began a war on poverty. He came to uh, a Mr. Fletcher's house on, on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post, you've seen, I'm sure. Uh, sat on the, poach, on the porch with Mr. Fletcher, started his war on poverty, went back to Washington, and that was the end of the war. Now, at that time, <laughs> Martin County had the largest, <laughs> we got a lot of Republicans in this room. Uh, a, a good week for Republicans. Uh, at, at that time, Martin County had the largest virgin coal seam east of the Mississippi. The only problem is that there was no transportation. Uh, the roads were still the U-shaped roads, hard to navigate. The railroads didn't come over to Martin County yet. So when Jim graduated from Moorhead, and your timing was exquisite, Jim, uh, when he graduated from Moorhead, came to Martin County, began his coal company, we went from the, one of the highest unemployment rates in Appalachia, that's why LBJ started his war there, to one of the lowest in the nation. Then, of course, the coal industry has always been up and down and up and down, and it continued then to be up and down, and then it was a downside. But you saw what Jim has done, you read in your program what Jim's done, but I'm going to tell you some things you didn't see in the program. Uh, what, I, um, what really makes me respect Jim Booth. Uh, as you said, Mr. Clark, he started with two partners, and when one of his partner, partners was dying with lung cancer, Jim and I went to see him one Sunday night, I think, and, and his biggest complaint was, hey, I'm in the bed here, and the bathroom is clear across the room, and I'm so weak, I don't, I'm not really strong enough to get over there, and hey, you know, we're all tough guys up in East Kentucky, and we're very independent. We don't want anybody to help. Certainly, we don't want anybody to help us go to the bathroom. So that was his biggest complaint. I mean, he was, of course, he was terminal, but that was his biggest complaint. The next day, Jim sent a crew of men, and this guy lived in a very, very lovely house. Jim sent a crew of men, cut a hole in the floor beside the bed, plumbed the, air, the area, built a wall around it, and all he had to do was slide over and he was in the bathroom. And I will never forget that. You know, I think that's the kind of man Jim really is. You know, Jim has done more for Martin County than anybody else I know. You know, I was there for 42 years. I was on the school board. And we built new schools because all our existing schools were WPA buildings. And so we built new schools. Jim and Jim's company did the excavation work for every one of those schools. And you know what he charged us? Exactly. So Jim's a great guy. He, he's a, certainly a great citizen. And you, you heard him. Uh, he did yield the floor his time to me. So I've got another hour and a half. So I know it's time to quit. <laughs> Uh, but believe me, all you, all you see in your program's true, but you really don't know the man until you know him like I. And he's, he's one fine gentleman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I tell you, Raymond, you've got me built up so, so much, I think I should stop right here. I don't think I need to mess up the impression that you left from me. <laughs> really, I really appreciate being honored. This is a, an award that I just am so humbled to, to be a part and to be in this class that I'm coming in with and, and, and the ones that came before me uh, and to look at the ones that are going to follow us. It's just awesome. Uh, I have uh, my wife is here. Uh, three daughters, uh, Angie, Amy, and Andrea are here. Uh, have two grandkids here. I've got uh, grandson Blake and granddaughter Blair. Uh, Brooke is at Center College and couldn't get here uh, out of that family. And my son-in-law Jeff is here. So and a lot of friends. And I really appreciate all you guys uh, for coming here today. Uh, 
I'm going to just bore you a little bit with uh, some of the story that Raymond started here. But uh, the, uh, you know, I grew up in, in, in a community that Raymond was talking about, a very poor community. And we, uh, I think need is what really drives a lot of us to, to do more. And that's one of the things that I think we sometimes deprive people of. You know, you can't make it too easy. You've got to work for it. And so that's something that uh, there were seven kids in my family, and uh, and our parents were uneducated, and we didn't really have a lot of income coming into our home. So very young, we started doing odd jobs, working. I delivered newspapers. We did things that uh, that contributed to to the food that was put on the table. And so it really makes a family close, and so it, it, it's caused us, I think, to be more successful. Out of those seven kids, five have college degrees. They've all been very successful in life, and they all work hard. But we, uh, so fast forward a little bit. Uh, well, first I want to tell you where I was born. I was born at Beauty, Kentucky. And my wife was born at Lovely, Kentucky. So, so we had to, so with, with with communities like that, we, we couldn't couldn't go too bad. So, so anyway, we uh, uh, whenever uh, whenever I was you know work to to I deliver newspapers. I did things in order to to buy my clothes and make it through through school. Uh, whenever we got ready to go to college. Uh, of course, there wasn't much help from, you know, you know there wasn't loans from the federal government. There wasn't uh, uh, very much government assistance at all to help the students. So, of course, uh, I worked. Worked seven days a week. And so uh, Linda and I got married when I was a sophomore at Moorhead. And, uh, and not too long after that, Angie came along. So we had a daughter there, there at college. And so we really had to, Linda worked at work programs. Uh, we had babysitting duties, couldn't afford a babysitter. So uh, when we had classes, we scheduled our classes. So one of us would be uh, uh, out of class while the other was in. Sometimes we'd have to pass on the street and hand Angie off so the other one could carry her back to the apartment. But, uh, but all in all, it's a lot of fun. It, it, you know, we worked hard, but we enjoyed it, and, and we feel good about it, even those days. But uh, as I was, uh, well, I started working in the coal mine in order to, to help pay for, for both of our educations, and I would drive home uh, from Moorhead. It's about a two-hour drive then because of those roads that we didn't have that Raymond was talking about. Governor Brown hadn't built Route 645 into Inez yet, but he did when he became governor, and so we now have a four-lane road that comes into Inez. But uh, but anyway, we we were uh, uh, you know, driving back and forth to to uh, for me to work on on the weekend in uh, in Inez, and then we would uh, come back to Moorhead go to class. Uh, but at the when I graduated, <clears throat> I was interviewing for jobs that that uh, my career uh, was training me for, and the best job offer I got was was uh, fifteen thousand dollars a year. Well, I had made that more than that working part time in a coal mine, so I begged Linda to let me go back and uh, and work a little while. I said, you know, we can we can uh, work a couple years. She didn't really want to go back to INS, but. We did go back, and, and, and real quickly, I got into management at the coal mine, and uh, it was very soon that I got an opportunity to start my own mine. So in 1975, uh, I put a contract coal mine in for Island Creek Coal Company. And to do that, I had to have $5,000. Well, I heard Jim Host talk about there's always somebody that helps you along the way. There's a special person that does. Well, Linda and I had, while I was working as a coal miner, I thought I was doing fine. We built a new house. We owed $30,000 to our local bank. The banker is Charles Kirk. He is the father-in-law of Mike Duncan. A lot of you probably know Mike Duncan. And uh, so I called my banker and I said, I'm getting ready to quit my job. 
I owe you $30,000, but I've got an opportunity to start a company that would be my own contract coal mine. And he said, I can do that. And that's what Luther Deaton has done for people. You, you've heard, you guys have heard those stories about how he helped R.J. Corman that way. And so there's always somebody, and that's what you guys need to think about. When somebody's trying to help you, let them. Because they want to help you. And, and they know, and they're doing it because they know you can be successful. And uh, I heard Bruce make the comment, I would invest in him. That's a great comment, Bruce. I appreciate you saying that because that's what we all have to do. We need to help the ones that follow us, and I'm willing to do that. And there was a lot of people helped me along the way. And those, those people, and then I heard one of the other uh, comments about learning from others, other people's mistakes. You're wise if you can do that. You know, you watch what other people do. It can save you. It can save you from making a lot of mistakes. But anyway, so Lin Linda and I, uh, you know, got back uh, in into in you know into INS, and we've started doing a lot of different things to to diversify. And so uh, that's how these other companies started. You know, uh, uh, entrepreneurship is something that is. Uh, it's fun. I mean, I just, you know, all these things that I did besides the coal mining, the coal mine allowed me to have the revenue to do a lot of the startups that I did and to make mistakes. They didn't all work, but that was my entertainment. I enjoyed it and still do. And it, that is the thing that drives an entrepreneur is that startup and that, that challenge and, and being able to, to do something and, and feel good about it and think you're providing jobs and helping helping other people and and that is that is what if if you're really a true entrepreneur you can't not take opportunities you're looking for them and you will take them and most of the time they work but so so anyway we I've got one more that I'm working on and uh, <clears throat> and it, it's been quite a challenge, but it's fun. And uh, we've gotten in the coffee business. And uh, one of my partners is here, <clears throat> Dr. Andrews from Moorhead. I was at Dr. Andrews' office one day, and Victor Bellisterio is, is a professor there at Moorhead, and he came in literally with a sack of coffee on his back. And he said, <clears throat> I've been to Costa Rica, he's from there. And he said, I've got this family co-op that is in, is in trouble. He said they can't get their coffee to the marketplace, and and so we talked about it, and and first thing you know, we were in Costa Rica uh, exploring that opportunity, and uh, so we've now got the best coffee in the world. <laughs> the name is Shuffle Bean, <clears throat> and you can buy it at Liquor Barn here in Lexington. <laughs> So, and, and the hardest part of, of that whole concept was coming up with a name. It was just very, every name that we could think about was, you know, I, I was going back to what uh, Bruce was talking about, you know, about, and I thought that was a cute remark about IBM was already taken. But believe me, all the coffee names were already taken too. So that's why ours is Shuffle Bean. And I'm gonna tell you real quick, the reason we named it that is, uh, we were listening to, to, to music while we were over there, and <clears throat> this party rock song came on. And you heard, every day I'm shuffling, shuffling. And I said, and I said wow, that's a, catchy, that's a catchy name. So that's where Shuffle Bean was born. So, <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll not bore you with any more of this, but I appreciate so much uh, getting this honor. This is absolutely wonderful. So thank you all.